In today's video, we're gonna be talking about browser sources in OBS. Roll that intro. What's going on guys, Chad here from How To Tech, the channel dedicated to helping you take your tech to the next level. And today we're gonna to be talking about browser sources in OBS, and this applies to OBS, OBS Studio, um, Stream Elements, Stream Labs, OBS, all the different flavors and versions of OBS this should work in. So let's go ahead and jump over to the computer and take a look at how to use browser sources and talk about what they are. So now we're over at the computer and let's ask the question, what are browser sources? Well, they're exactly what they sound like. They are a source from a browser, but technically it's a browser that's kind of built into OBS. It's not going to be like a default browser tab because if you wanted to capture that, you could easily do that with a program or a display capture, or um, I think it's a window capture, or whatever the terminology is for those. You can do that with those, but there are some really cool things that you can also do with browser sources, such as alerts for OBS or, um, you know, text on the screen, browser sources can be used for a lot. Now I'm going to go ahead and say is, uh, the thing that I think is really important is that yes, I know programs like stream elements and stream labs have integrated, um, things for creating things such as overlays, adding text and alerts and stuff inside of it. And we're actually going to be using stream labs, um, web version to show you guys how to do that. Um, but it can be used with multiple, you know, third party programs that are out there that support browser sources to be able to show alerts and do other cool things with it. Um, but the first thing I want to show you is the very rudimentary of like bringing a web page in with a browser source. So they used to be called browser sources. It's actually just called browser now. So I'm going to go ahead and add a browser source in. I'm not going to give it a name and we're actually going to pull up the how to tech website. So I believe you need HTTP. You could put HTTPS, but I don't think it works unless you put the actual URL in. So we're going to do how to tech media.com. And we're actually going to set this to 1920 by if I could type 1920 by 1080 and we'll go ahead and leave that and yeah we're just going to go ahead and click ok so what should happen now is as you can see on the screen the how to tech website actually just loaded on top of uh, my current scene because it's now able to be dragged into the scene and it can be moved around so this is actually kind of neat if you needed to use it in this kind of capacity now i would probably like i said just go ahead and use a window capture or display capture it's going to work a little bit better than this, but I did want to showcase this. I also want to showcase that you can right click on a browser source and click interact and you can actually mess with some stuff here. I've not figured out if it's possible to scroll inside of this. I don't believe it is, um, but you can interact and click on stuff. So, so for example, if I wanted to go to the store page of where we've got um, our merch, you can actually click on that. It's not loading, but I can go to free stuff and it is loading that. It may not actually redirect to out uh, or external links. So that's something to keep in mind, but I believe it will play a YouTube video inside of here. And I'm gonna go ahead and mute it because it started playing audio. But yeah, you could do a YouTube video inside of here. Um, I believe there's probably be quite a few other examples of where this would be useful. And it looks like you can also pause the video as well. Um, if you do like a reaction videos and stuff like that, this may be useful for you. But typically what people are going to be using browser sources for are people that stream. And I can show you where you can do that, how that could be useful. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this browser source. And we're actually going to go over to Streamlabs this website. So I'm going to type in Streamlabs. We're going to go over there and I'm going to log in with my accounts and we'll jump back to where I'm at once I log in. So now I'm signed into Streamlabs and what I'm actually going to do is go to the alert box. I've actually already clicked on it and we're just going to test using alerts. Now I'm going to go ahead and keep this blurred out um, or I just won't show this part of the screen. I don't know what the significance is of this URL, um, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to copy it because if you have alerts set up, whenever you click these buttons, it should actually test those alerts that you're using. And if you're using any other kind of like third party browser source, like I mentioned previously, um, what's going to be really useful about this is that you can just pull it in and you don't have to do a bunch of back end work inside of OBS. You literally just copy this link, paste it in there and it'll do its thing. So I'm going to go ahead and click browser source and I'm going to add a new one 
and I'm just gonna paste in my URL one more time. I'm not gonna show you what my URL is, but I'm gonna go ahead and click okay. And we can now see that we have like a phantom box here with nothing on it. And that's because this is for an alert. And the reason why it's not gonna show anything is because, well, um, whenever you're testing alerts, it doesn't, for whatever reason, um, it doesn't give you a preview. Now, there are some browser sources that give you the option to put in like custom characters at the very end, which might have like preview and let you preview the browser source, which is really neat. I don't know if uh, Streamlabs has that integration, but you could also, like I said, use the Streamlabs version of OBS and then not deal with browser sources and just add them in manually inside um, the sources panel. But this example is just kind of basically what browser sources are. So I'm gonna go ahead and click test follow and we can see that we got Wayne from Wayne's World giving us an excellence because we're acting like essentially, um, you know, like we just got to follow. And you could do the same for subscriptions and stuff like that. And you could set them up on the back end of uh, Streamlabs' website. And you can integrate it this way. If you don't want to use Streamlabs' version of OBS, you can still use some of the features that it offers by adding in a browser source. And you can see how you can also add in web pages. And like I said, there's other third party websites that you can look up. Maybe go on YouTube. You might make a video on it sometime soon of some really cool browser sources you can use. So if you wanted really custom alerts, there are websites that have more custom alerts and things that you can do with alerts that maybe Streamlabs doesn't offer. You can find it out there, import it in, and there are things for building, you know, overlays and stuff like that. I'm not certain if the overlays inside of Streamlabs, I believe the overlays inside of Streamlabs do require you to have Streamlabs installed, but like I said, there are other websites out there that let you build whole overlays without hiring a graphic designer, and then you can literally just drop it in by copying that browser source URL, setting it to the right dimensions inside of the browser source. So like you'd set this to 1920 by 1080, if it was for 1080p or whatever resolution, and it's that simple. So yeah, guys, that's gonna be all for this video. If you enjoyed, you know what to do. Go ahead and destroy that like button and get subscribed to the channel if you aren't already and turn on notifications while you're there as well for future videos somewhat similar to this and other videos on OBS advanced tips and tricks and stuff like that. We've also got a beginner playlist or a beginner series video and then we've got a playlist for all the advanced stuff. So go ahead and check both of those out. Also, if you guys wanna support the channel financially, become a YouTube member today for perks such as early access to video, polls and just member updates and stuff like that so we can get your guys's feedback and you can help better influence this channel also join our community discord linked down below we've got over 8,000 people there and we're getting very close to the discovery feature inside of discord of where people can literally click on a button type in how to tech and they can find our server which is really really cool so thank you guys for watching this video this has been chad from how to tech helping you take your tech to the next level and i will see you guys in the next video peace